three shooter bucks in this general unit hard to hunt and we're just driving around tasing each other all day <laughs> just talking hanging out and seven bull elk you know two five by fives just showed up out of nowhere out of this point strolling in i think we spent about 30 minutes arguing about how we were going to get <laughs> deer out of there because it was down a ravine and let's get into this next yeah. one this this one's a funny story of teenage boys going hunting <laughs> were you 18 yet uh no i was still in high school i was senior so i was 17 i don't know if we were even allowed to be hunting by ourselves but it's what's in the past is in the past we're good. <laughs> what year i think this was 2017 Yep. So this was the same area, actually, that that last story came from. But this time, we're way back in there, right? And about as far back into this area as you can get via the road. You're driving your dad's Suburban. And I think first thing in the morning, we get way back there. We're glassing this big, like, valley, um, just a lot of terrain for deer. And we look down at the bottom of the hill right below us. And what were there, three bucks there? And every no, so time. remember when we walked up the hill because the only reason we knew they were there is because we saw a doe walk up the hill. So then we go up and up the hill because Cody was with us at the time too. So when yeah. we walked up the hill, we looked down in the valley and we saw three bull elk. No, that was later in the story, dude. Well, it's that later. See, I need the hunting journal because I'm literally <laughs> no. back of details here. I got you, bro. I got you. So it was first... I might remember more than I do then. It was first thing in the morning um, when we got on those that first group of deer, right? Oh, I do. Okay, yep, I got you. Yeah, yeah. And on, on our way out there, I remember seeing your dad's 270. And I'm like, Drew has his dad's 270. I was like, hey, Drew, what rifle did you bring today? He's like, the 308. I was like, I thought that's your dad's 270. He's like, no, 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 this is the 308. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe his dad has another 308. I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, whatever. So we get back in there, way back in, and we spot these deer. They're just right down at the bottom of the hill. And that's a good hunting tip. Like, look right below you, because they could be in cover. They could be right underneath you. But anyways, 100 yards away, I'm like, all right, Drew, three shooter bucks in this general unit, hard to hunt. Comes out with a 270, posts up, gets ready to shoot. And I'm just waiting for it because I know that's the 270. And I'm just I was just waiting for it. But I was like praying, okay, please be a 308. And so Drew goes to jack some rounds in the chamber and he goes to close the bolt and the bolt won't close. <laughs> and there's three shooter bucks a hundred yards away, just right down at the bottom of this hill. Oh man. Do you remember? Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, and then I was like, shit, so they got, you know, a job just sitting there. I left them in the wilderness as I drove 45 minutes back into town to go get the right rounds. And then I get back there, and you guys weren't even there. I think you guys stalked them probably like a mile and a half from the roadway all the way up a ridge. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, dude. I remember you were trying to close the bolt on that. I was like, dude that's the 270 he's like no it's not it's the 308 and i grabbed the barrel and i pointed to the barrel marking i was like 270 wsm you're like yeah i was so pissed i was so pissed <laughs> oh man so then yeah so cody and i we were hanging out there oh i should probably mention this entire time we had a little flashlight taser in the truck and we're just driving around tasing each other all day <laughs> but um so Drew drives back and Cody and I stayed on the deer and stalked them for a while, but eventually we lost them. They were mature mule deer and in a general unit, they're not going to stick around for long. So we ended up like a mile across this big canyon, found some bedding areas and some good stuff that I uh, still have in my GPS to this day, actually. But Drew brought both rifles and the ammo for both of them, the 270 and the 308 when he came back. So we had our bases covered there. And then I think we just drove around for the rest of the day until about one o'clock, just tasing each other and screwing around, right? I do remember the time in that drive when we were tasing somebody. I was glad I brought both rifles is because Cody saw um, a coyote that he wanted to shoot. But Cody couldn't get the rifle out fast enough to get a shot on him. And he was actually, no, he shot once and he missed. But Cody didn't realize you could put more than one round in the chamber at a time because <laughs> that had a built in clip. So we had to grab another bullet, and at that time, the coyote was gone. It comes to the end of the day, we're way back in there, and we decide to go walk up this hill and glass down the other side. 
we're being loud. We're not even really hunting at this point. We're just messing around, BSing and whatnot. And we get up and we're sitting on this rock, just talking, hanging out. And seven bull elk. It was seven bulls, dude. I knew it was something like seven. that. And they were all mature bulls. They were all six by sixes. And they just come rolling down through where we're sitting here wa- watching for these mule deer. We're like, holy crap. So I had a general elk tag and I'm like, what if I have a tag for him? I was like, oh shit. So I went to run back to the truck to check the regulations, found out it wasn't general and walked back up, but I was going to run to the truck, grab my tag and run back and shoot one of those bulls. But they go rolling off and we're sitting on that same rock. And then out of nowhere, even after your colossal screw up at the beginning of the day, (laughs) these two mule deer just come walking in right where the elk came through. And they were both shooter bucks. You it was just them. so ironic. They just out of nowhere, you know, two five by fives just showed up out of nowhere out of this point, strolling in. And I'm sitting there posted up waiting for them. And, you know, subtlety is not our thing. So I yelled at both you and Cody because you guys were telling me which one to shoot. And I finally just yelled and said, which one has the bigger body? Yeah. I don't hunt for horns. I hunt for meat. I try to get the most meat out of the animal I'm taking. And finally, Dylan's like the one on the right. And, you know, we shot him at 307 yards. Ironic, Wyoming's area code is 307, so I thought that was a pretty cool moment. Boom. I'll never forget that yardage for that one because it's the biggest buck I've shot to date, and it just was a good, memorable moment. I'll put a picture of the buck in here for sure. Yeah, so you shoot it at 307, perfect shot, just drops him right there. We're like, did that actually just happen? It was like 2 in the afternoon. Usually they're bedded down. We're just sitting there on a rock, just talking, and these we just gifted these two nice mule deer. And I wish I didn't fill my archery tag earlier that season because I'd have shot the other one. I know we could have had a tandem, you know, tandem shot again. Could have had another <laughs> tandem. <laughs> we just be tandems all the way. Oh yeah. Oh man. So yeah, we get over there, and I think we spent about thirty minutes arguing about how we were going to get <laughs> deer out of there because it was down a ravine and back up the other side another straight down and straight up and the truck from there is another half a mile that way i was not the brightest thinker here note to self this wasn't my vehicle it was my dad's vehicle so i walked all the way back to the truck note to self the hill that was there didn't have a road on it that didn't stop me i took the suburban off road and drove through brush and everything up a 45 degree hill because I didn't want to try to drag that deer any farther than I had to. So I got the I got the truck all the way to the top of that hill. Very sketchy. I dodged some big rocks to try to get there. So then all we had to do is drag the deer from where it was up one hill versus having to take it all the way. Which we got there. But I think it took us like, I don't know, two and a half hours to get the deer back. Yeah, so we ended up taking the hindquarters off and then dragging the torso with the rib cage and everything. And then Drew, I thought we were going to die multiple times that day because you really liked your off-roading. But we're coming, (laughs) we get the deer into the truck and we're coming down this hill to get back to the two track, just leaning this stock Suburban. And let me tell you, a stock Suburban will get around. Oh yeah, we have a lot of, you know, stories of hunting that, you know, we may not have gotten some of it, but it's still a story that, you know, we still share. Oh yeah, it's all about the stories. And here at Mountain Country Outdoors, Our slogan is we are for the memories and that's what we're all about. So that's why we share these hunting stories with you. We're glad you guys tuned in. Remember, you can share your stories beyond 10 years, beyond five years or what was that? Like six, seven years ago now, that last story. And I'm telling you right now, I'm young and Drew is young and we're already starting to forget the details. So get your guided hunting journal. For this season, order them now so that you have them when the season rolls around. And then whatever memories you make this season, they'll last forever. So that's why we made these journals. And also so we can learn from all of our young hunter mistakes. So thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.